Well, Baltimore City Police Commissioner Anthony Batts is asking for feds for help, not in a murder case, but to help solve the issues within the city police department. That word just came out just before five. Let's go now to the headquarters with Katrina Bush. What's it all mean, Katrina? Well, the commissioner said he's heard the complaints and he's well aware of the distrust that exists between the community and the police department. And what he wants people to know is about the steps that they've taken to improve those relationships. Now, he said that that's why he's invited a federal review of the department to get that third party validation out there to the community uh, that they are doing the right thing. Now, just within the last few weeks, the commissioner said he's talked with the commissioners in Las Vegas and Philadelphia who have invited the same types of reviews for their city police departments and been in touch with them to see what all that entails and would entail here in Baltimore. Again, though, the commissioner did stress that work to reform the department has already started. Real reform started when I came in here day one. Uh, we started by um, severing people from employment at this organization. I've relieved people uh, of their position, about 30 of them at this point in time. Uh, we've redone our policies, our procedures. We've held the organization accountable. We've pushed out leaders or leadership that is not in alignment with the reform methods that we have here. Uh, this is not a game. We're not playing. We're not here for PR. We're not here for public relations. We're here to do substantive change. In order to do that, uh, I think at this point in time, we need people to also look at us and say we're doing the right thing in the right way. Again, Commissioner Batts uh, just uh, announced that he has re requested a federal review of the Baltimore Police Department. We're not sure yet how long that will take. Baltimore City Council President is calling on the Department of Justice to conduct a full review of the city's police department. This after a series of police brutality cases go viral. WJC is live. Rick Ritter has the police commissioner's reaction tonight. Rick? Well, Vic, Commissioner Bads and Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake are calling for the same review. He says he and the mayor have talked about this for quite some time and, quote, they have nothing to hide and everything to gain. Disturbed and disgusted, Baltimore City's top cop says the recent behavior of some of his officers is unacceptable. Their actions bring discredit to us all and tarnish our efforts to work with our community. Commissioner Bats' request for a full review by the Department of Justice comes after multiple videos of police brutality surfaced, including one from June showing an officer brutally beating a man at a bus stop. That citizen filed a multi-million dollar lawsuit. What you have here is an officer who was very mad because he felt a citizen disrespected him. A recent investigation by the Baltimore Sun revealed a number of police brutality cases across the city, but Commissioner Batts says that article has nothing to do with his request. I don't think the newspaper article had anything to do. As I said, as day one when I walked in the door, we started this reform. The Sun's investigations also revealed more than 100 people have won settlements that, along with legal fees, cost city taxpayers $11.5 million over the years. We know that there is a few of us who are not in alignment with the philosophy that I have set forth for this police agency. Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake says it's clear the changes are necessary. The issue for me is making sure that we are doing everything that we can. And that a full review by the federal government into their policies and procedures will benefit the entire city. I've heard the complaints, I've heard the distrust, and it is clear there's still work to be done. There's no exact timetable on how soon that review will start, but Commissioner Batts says he imagines it will be pretty quickly. Reporting live tonight, Rick Ritter, WJZ Eyewitness News. Rick, thank you. And Batts noted that Las Vegas and Philadelphia police both had a similar review to help improve their departments. Well, Karen, good evening. Now, the commissioner says it's a decision that Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake supports. And so tonight, Baltimore police will soon be part of a federal probe. At the Baltimore City Police Department, Commissioner Anthony Batts walks into the press room with a major announcement. I didn't break it, but I'm here to fix it. Batts is calling for a federal review of his department after a series of misconduct allegations against police. A Department of Justice investigation, he says, to restore public trust. We welcome their examination. We have nothing to hide and everything to gain from outside review. The department has been hit with a number of lawsuits and brutality complaints in recent years. And just last month, videos of violent arrest surfaced. Look, he ain't doing nothing. Look, he ain't doing nothing. Including this one caught on camera outside a nightclub that left a man hospitalized. 
Also in September, more video makes news. The violent arrest of a man at a bus stop on North Avenue. An officer seen repeatedly punching a man whose charges were eventually dropped. Bat says this department has already made changes to the department's disciplinary process and other policy changes. Significant progress. Still, he says, reality hasn't caught up with public perception. So he's asking the feds to step in. I know the overwhelming majority of this organization is filled with good police, good people, good police officers who work hard, who do their best, who are diligent, and want to make a difference in a very tough and dangerous job. This review will give legitimacy to their efforts and send a powerful message to the people of Baltimore that this is a good and respectful organization. Well, the commissioner's call for a federal review comes after a similar request by City Councilman Jack Young. Councilman Young says his letter has already been sent out to Attorney General Eric Holder. Well, live now at City Police Headquarters, Keith Daniels, Fox 45 News. All right, thank you, Keith. And you can see the entire news conference online. Just go to foxbaltimore.com slash raw news. And now the news at 11. They were nothing to hide and everything to gain from outside review. That's what the Baltimore Police Commissioner is saying tonight about the DOJ stepping in. ABC 2 News' Katrina Bush joins us now with the very latest. Hey, Jamie, this is the fifth review Commissioner Batts has ordered over his two years with the Baltimore Police Department. He says this kind of work is exactly what he was brought here to do. Trust, respect, and support. Baltimore Police Commissioner Anthony Batts says he's doing everything he can to help the department earn that back from the city. I didn't break it, but I'm here to fix it. His latest move is requesting a federal review to assist in reforming the department. The commissioner says that'll include a close look at training, internal affairs processes, and supervision within the department. When you bring the DLJ in, you're bringing DLJ in just to say that we're doing the right things, going the right direction. We're using their platform. We're using their framework. We have been using their platform and their framework and doing the right things in the right, in the right way. Bats stressed that during his announcement Friday that the department has been making progress, but it's clear to him the public doesn't see it that way. He says the numbers don't lie. When something happens that doesn't fall in line with the philosophy they've set out, they move to correct it. Bats says that's been the case since day one for him. Only 58% of the officers were being held accountable for misconduct within the organization. That's up to about 90%. We're, we're having sustained convict convictions. That means that when we do an investigation in internal affairs, and internal affairs sustains those cases, and we send them to a trial board, those officers in those egregious cases that make it to a trial board, they're, they're being held accountable. In many cases, they're being uh, terminated. No word yet on how long the federal review will take. What is clear, Bat says, the distance between the public and the department will continue to shrink. What I've been brought here to do is to build those relationships, to reform this organization, and that's what we're doing. And Bat says he has been in touch with the heads of the Philadelphia Police Department as well as the Las Vegas Police Department, who have invited the same reviews into their cities. Katrina Bush, ABC2 News. Documents show in the past two years alone, Baltimore City taxpayers spent millions paying for lawsuit settlements involving Baltimore City Police. Janice Park says the cases range from elderly abuse to even fatal cases. Janice. Hi, Jeff. Well, in 2012 and 2013, victims received about $4.5 million worth of taxpayer money. Now, who are these victims? Well, one was a 90-year-old woman who had her shoulder separated. Another was a man who was shot in the back by police, and he did not survive. Aubrey Knox sits in his front yard, a dying man. Signs of his kidney dialysis can be seen on his arm. Knox was just one of more than 100 people in recent years who have won settlements against the Baltimore City Police Department. He was nearly beaten to death by inmates after being falsely arrested. While he can't talk about his case, he is talking about the other ones. Police are protected by the city's lack of transparency with, with, with letting the people know we hired knuckleheads. In 2012 and 2013, citizens were paid $4.5 million. One case involved 90-year-old Venus Green, whose shoulder was separated after police tried to search her home. She was awarded 
$5,000. I just think that what happens is you typically have somebody who's an idiot and shouldn't be working for the police department who gets things out of hand. In 2011, Lakia Jeter was awarded $375,000 after an officer shot Edward Hunt in the back at the Hamilton Park Shopping Center. To look at and see how other cities are dealing with this because I find it hard to believe that every city is just paying out. Why aren't we taking these cases to court? Why are we just settling? And now several videos have come out involving questionable police activity. This arrest outside of Melba's is under investigation, but the police union says the officers acted appropriately. For some, their view of Baltimore's finest has changed forever. The city's pretty much paying for a criminal element that has police powers. And we're told the city has spent about $5 million for outside counsel for these cases. We're live tonight outside of City Hall, Janice Park, Fox 45 News. All right, Janice, Baltimore City Council, meantime, is considering the use of body cameras for its police officers. But in Washington, D.C., they're already using them. Beginning today, more than 160 D.C. police officers are now outfitted with these cameras. It's part of a million-dollar pilot program designed to improve safety for both officers and the public and make investigations much more efficient. The program could expand to the entire D.C. police force within three years.